I'm Pastor Justin. I'm Pastor PJ. Welcome back to our month-long parade. Week two. As, as we look at some really awesome leaders in the Bible. You know, being in a parade or even leading a parade could be kind of scary, right? What are some things that, that make you afraid? Some things that make me afraid? Heights. Heights? Yeah, mm. I'm a scaredy cat when it comes to heights. What about spiders? Um, when I was little, story time. Okay. When I was little, I used to be more afraid of spiders, and now I'm not. Isn't that a great story? <laughs> Good story. That's, that's, that's the entire story. What about thunderstorms? I think thunderstorms can be really cool or really scary. Yes. If the lightning's close, mm -hmm. yeah. Thunderstorms can be creepy. What about um, monsters under your bed? Do you have any? Uh, no. I made mine move out. Those are fake. Yeah. They're not real. It's true. Totally unreal. Don't be afraid of those. You ever, you ever, have you ever gotten lost? Yeah. Sometimes. I've been like in the store with my mom looking at something and all of a sudden my mom is not there anymore. Uh -oh. It's kind of scary. That is really creepy. Yeah. Yeah. It makes me a little afraid. Did you cry? Um, a little. Were you like, mommy? It was a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I mean, you're you're a pastor, so you speak a lot. Do you ever get afraid to speak in front of people? You know, it's funny. I'm, I speak in church all the time, but when I was first starting off, it was really intimidating. It was not really scary, but like, it took a long time to get used to. Yeah. Yeah. Same for me. But I, I think more than speaking in front of people, I think snakes are kind of scary. Yeah, snakes are the scariest so far, what you said. What about shots at the doctor? Ooh, that's that's not good. I'd rather get a shot than see a snake. It's but true. both scary. That's true. You know, there are a lot of people that have fears, and they're called phobias. <laughs> that's a, a big word. Um, but today we're going to look at someone in the Bible that um, God was able to use even though he was afraid. Yeah, God, God called this one guy Gideon who was a judge and he, God would called him to kind of take on this whole army and he was really scared. He didn't want to do it. He's like, how can, how can I do this, God? I'm just this one guy. How am I going to do this? And it was a really scary thing, but we're going to see how God empowered him to be this really great leader. And that's our main point today is that God gives us the courage to lead. Can you say that with us? God, God gives, gives us, us the, the courage, courage to lead. lead. Let's check out this week's video. Hi there, Chicken Nuggets. It's me, Coral. And I'm Andy. Welcome to Grow TV. <laughs> Welcome to Grow TV. Hosted by Coral. Where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to Grow what is up, Andy? How's it going? What it do? Hey there. What's up? All right, no more. Mada! <laughs> we have fun. We sure do. You seem like you're in a really good mood, Carl. Well, it's because I am. Well, why is that? Well, after last week's big idea of everyone can be a leader, well, it got me excited. That's great, Carl. <laughs> it really is. I mean. I'm a leader! I can accomplish so much! That's so good for you, man. What? What was that? Well, I mean, I think it's great that you're confident, but... Uh, but what? Well, leading takes a lot of responsibility, and I'm always scared to lead. I'm scared to lead? Why? I mean, what if I fail? <laughs> fail? <laughs> what are you talking about, fail? Well, you know how you could succeed at leading, right? Um, yeah, if you're good at something, you succeed. What's the problem? Well, the problem is, just like you can succeed, you can also fail. Excuse me? Wait, you mean you you didn't know that? What? <laughs> of course I knew that. I mean, like, you, when you succeed, this is like, when you fail, you know, it's uh, the conundrum of this sentence is what? What? Carl, you're not making any sense. That's because I'm failing, Andy. But. No buts. This is it. Every hope, goal, and dream I had is vanished into thin air. Whoa, Carl, that is not. No more leading for me. Let's take a moment to thank all the leaders that I wanted to be like. <laughs> hey, Jada. Hey, Andy. How's it going, Carl? Oh, not bad. You excited about being a leader? Carl's not having the best day. Oh? 
How come? I'm just a little bummed is all. Why's that? Well, I was so excited about being a leader, but then Andy destroyed my whole universe. Okay, not really. I was just reminding Carl that sometimes when you're leading, you may not always succeed. You may fail or mess up. And now he just reminded me twice. Why are you trying to destroy my whole universe, Andy? I'm glad you're not being dramatic about this. I'm not dramatic! <laughs> okay, I'm a little dramatic. Now, Carl, you gotta understand, leading can be scary, but it's so much easier when you have God on your side. Just like Gideon. Exactly. Gideon, what? He? Gideon, he was a normal guy in the Old Testament. Yup, and one day while he was working, an angel came to him and told him that the Lord was with him. But weren't the Israelites, God's people, kind of in a just like a bad spot right then? They were. The people of God were not listening to God, but God still loved them. Oh. That angel also called Gideon a mighty warrior. Hold up. I thought you just said he was a normal dude, not some mighty warrior. <laughs> Those things are completely different. Well, Gideon was surprised by hearing that too, but he was told by the angel that he would be the one to defeat the Midianites, the people who have been treating the Israelites so poorly. <laughs> wow, that's huge. It was, but Gideon started out his mighty warrior status by leading the charge to destroy the idols that his own people had put up. <laughs> Whoa, that was bold. Carl, do you even know what an idol is? Yeah, it's anything that takes place of God. I mean, God talked about it in the Ten Commandments. Respect. Yeah, I know things. That was impressive, Carl. Then Gideon was told he would have to go to battle, even though his community was weak and he was the smallest in his family. Talk about being afraid to fail. That's a lot of pressure. You bet it is, and Gideon was so nervous that he asked for a sign from God. Like a stop sign? Not really. What Gideon was going to do is he was going to take a piece of wool from a lamp, go outside and lay it down. And in the morning, if that wool was wet and the ground was dry, he knew that God would keep his promise and be with him and help him defeat the Midianites. How would a wet piece of wool help? It wouldn't, but that was Gideon's way of making absolute sure that it was God who was calling him. Still weird, but proceed. God gave Gideon the signs he asked for, but when Gideon gathered people to join his army, God told Gideon that there were too many people in his army. So Gideon said, anyone who was afraid to fight can go home. And do you know how many people went home? 500. 22. 22. Ha! 1,000. 22,000 soldiers. What? What? And even though there were only 10,000 soldiers left, God said it was still too much. So Gideon listened to God, and at the end of it, there were only 300 soldiers left. Are you kidding me? Why would God take away Gideon's armies? Well, Gideon was told he would defeat the Midianites, and God wanted to make sure that everyone would know that if it wasn't for God, then they would have failed. Holy moly, that's incredible. So they won? They sure did, all because Gideon trusted God, and God gave him courage to lead. Well, that's great. So I guess I shouldn't be worried about failing. Right? Everyone fails, but it takes real courage and bravery to lead. It takes courage to trust, too. And leading with God on your side is so much better than anything else. <laughs> I believe that. What an awesome reminder. God gives me courage <laughs> to lead. Hey, Carl, that's our big idea. Heck, what? No, <laughs> you're silly, Jada. Andy. Apparently, today's big idea is God gives me courage to lead. So let's say it out loud on the count of three. One, two, three. God, God gives, gives me, me courage, courage to lead. To lead. Yeah. <laughs> Way oh, to go. God. He gives me the courage and you the courage. And Andy, apparently, who would have thunk? Hey, I got a question, Andy. What are you afraid of? Nothing. Really? Not even this? What is it? Nothing. Ah! <laughs> gotcha. See you next week, kids. Thank you for watching, and tune in next week for a new episode of Road That's all right. <laughs> so let's let's talk about this for a minute, Josh. So 
We were just looking at, at some different animals. What were we looking at? We saw a bee, a spider, frog, snake, and lizard. Right. And are they scary? Sometimes they can be. Right. But really, sometimes they have a good purpose too, don't they? Right. Insects, How can they help us? Well, you can find pretty much insects pretty much anywhere. Like spiders, you can find in dusty places that have cobwebs. Mm -hmm. Some spiders can be found in caves. Bees, you can pretty much find anywhere if you have flowers or plants. Are they going to hurt us most of the time? Well, not really. Well, bees are really helpful insects. They pollinate flowers, they're good at making honey. Spiders help catch insects in the webs they spin. Oh, that's great. So, things that look scary, we don't always have to be scared, do we? Right. No, why don't we have to be scared, Josh? Oh, I don't have to be scared because I remember that God will always be with me and he will never leave or forsake me. Whenever I feel afraid, I remember what Isaiah 41.10 says. What's that? So do not fear, for I am with you. And do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you and hold you with my righteous right hand. That's amazing. And that is so wonderful that all the young people watching this video can know that even if they're afraid of something, even if something worries them a little bit, that God is always with them watching over them, and he will take care of them, right? And he will never leave or forsake. And also, if you're afraid, you can put your trust in him too. Thank you so much, Josh, for sharing. And thank you for helping out with this lesson today for the students. Very welcome. Bye now. See ya. Take care. Hi again. We're going to do a verse in sign language from the book of Micah, the sixth chapter and the eighth verse. Some of the signs are really easy like you and walk and some are kind of hard like mercy, which I'm not even sure I'm doing right. So follow along and we'll get it down together. And what does the Lord require of you to act justly? and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Well guys, thanks again for joining us for Grow Kids as we learned about Gideon and that sometimes leadership takes courage. And that's our big idea for the day, that God gives me the courage to lead. And you might be thinking, why do I need courage to lead? Well, sometimes God might put you in situations that it's easier to not lead and you need his power, you need his courage to have you do what it's, what's right, even though it might be hard. Like let's say everybody's picking on one kid in class. You, to stand up for that kid might take some courage, even though it's the right thing to do. Maybe there's other situations where you're like, you know what, I'd just rather, I'd rather not be a leader right now. I'd rather walk away, I'd rather go do something easier. But the right thing to do, the thing that honors God is to stay there and be a leader in that situation. So that will take some courage. Let's pray for God's courage as we head out this morning or this afternoon, or wherever you're watching this. Let's pray. Now, God, I pray for your courage to help us to lead well. Lead in a way that glorifies you, that shows people what Jesus is like. That when we face difficult circumstances, that you call us to step up and be a leader, to do what is right, to say what is right, to maybe not say something that we want to say. Whatever it might be, Lord, I pray that you give us the courage to do just that. And may you be glorified through our efforts. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, remember that God loves you so, so much, and he calls us to love him with everything we have and to love those around us. Have a great day.